Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and this video is going to be probably a new series. I think I'm going to make a new playlist as well because it's going to be called the holiday home automation. Our family has a really, really small uh, summer cottage at Lake Balaton and then we decided that it's time to renovate it. I, I don't think that we have done any major renovation for the past whatever 25 years and it was still okay but we wanted to get some you know extra creature comforts for example it doesn't have air conditioning which we don't need a lot in the summer but sometimes if we have cooler weather then it would be nice if we can have heating so we thought okay we were going to have air conditioning which can you know cool and heat so that would be nice but then the windows are really old as well so we are going to change the windows and then the bathroom is also quite outdated so we are going to upgrade the bathroom as well and then since we are touching the bathroom and we are going to make some you know masonry work well it would be nice to look at the electrical works and it turns out that uh, many places in the house doesn't have proper earth so okay let's redo the electricals as well so it turns out to be a major renovation and there is one thing I'm really concerned about this new home is that we are going to put in new plastic windows and I'm just concerned that um, the home is going to be very much locked in and because we, well, literally we are not using it for six months of the year uh, throughout the winter, that it is possible that a humid weather is going to build up. So I want to do something about, you know, managing the air inside the home. And while well, of course we are going to have air conditioning, but I don't want to run the air conditioning just to keep, a, you know, a low temperature in the home. So I was thinking about, using some sort of air circulation system and of course if I want to use air circulation system I probably want to have some sort of automation to manage that maybe I need to use the air circulation in conjunction with the heating of the air conditioning as well um, so I need a couple of sensors inside and out and I need to control these devices and well you need automation so I have this old Raspberry Pi 3 with an official 7 inch uh, Raspberry Pi touchscreen which I was using in the past in my uh, car so my old car didn't have Android Auto so I was uh, using uh, I, I have installed crankshaft on this one which is a, an open source Android Auto replacement so I was using this setup for that but I bought a new car which has Android Auto, so I don't need that. So I have this thing laying around without you know, collecting dust. So I thought this is going to be ideal to use uh, at my you know, summer house. So I started this new project where I'm going to use this Raspberry Pi 3 uh, together with the screen. So that's going to be the, you know, the touch screen for the automation. And because I use Node-RED, so this is definitely going to have Node-RED. But I thought, well, maybe this is the time that I also learned some Home Assistant. So this has now Home Assistant, Node-RED, and for the sensors, I decided to use ESP Home. So that's going to be the holy trinity of home automation as far as, you know, most of the people I follow on the internet or YouTube concern. So Home Assistant, Node-RED, and ESP Home. I definitely don't know too much about Home Assistant, so I think I will try to use Home Assistant as minimal as I can. Uh, mostly use it for the UI and I will try to implement almost everything in Node-RED, even if something is it can be done in Home Assistant. And still I'm debating whether I need Home Assistant because I don't think that we are going to use the UI a lot. And of course it creates a lot of overhead. So I'm still not really sold on the home assistant part and there is going to be a lot of automation that I'm not going to use because I don't want lights, I don't want uh, you know sockets or WLED or anything in that house. Literally I just want to control the AC, the circulation fan and just connect sensor data. Oh yeah and there's one more thing I also want to do is I want to also be able to remotely turn on the water heater. So. If we decide to go down uh, in the evening, I want to make sure that I have uh, hot water by the time we get there. So these are basically the you know two or three things that I want to do. And probably I can install some cameras so I can just remotely monitor those as well. Or it can, you know, if there is motion detection, then it can take some pictures and send them to me. That sort of stuff. So nothing really, you know, classical home automation with lights and everything. I still want, you know, regular light switches. I'm talking about a home which is like 35 square meters. So, I mean, <laughs> if I reach my hand out, then I'm going to reach the, 
you know the light switch so I don't need anything smart on that part so what I have done so far is I have installed home assistant I have also installed ESP home node red I've also in installed MQTT but actually I might remove MQTT at the end because since I'm going to use ESP home that's going to communicate with home assistant anyway so I'm thinking that MQTT could be made redundant in this setup and I've also started creating some sensors but I think I'm going to cover that in a separate video so I can talk you how that works the only special about this installation that when you install home assistant then you usually download the home assistant OS so you install the the home assistant as an operating system on a Raspberry Pi by the way this is a Raspberry Pi 3 plus it's not a Raspberry Pi 4 but I think it should be plenty enough but if you use the OS install you are not going to get a GUI and I didn't want to have a separate device just for this touch screen because this touch screen is already connected to the Raspberry Pi so what I have done here is I've done a home assistant supervised install where I have installed the Linux operating system with the usual GUI and you know the touch screen and and all the controls that you can see here so as you can see it's a you know regular Raspberry Pi buster I think OS and then once you have that installed I installed Home Assistant on top of it. So I have Home Assistant running in the background of a regular Linux uh, distribution. So that was the only way for me to use the screen on the same device where the Home Assistant runs. And of course, once Home Assistant was installed, I could install you know, Node-RED and ESP Home from uh, Home Assistant. Let me take you through the, the Home Assistant dashboard. I mean, there is, there is not a lot here. And to be honest, I don't want to talk about Home Assistant setup because I'm just starting with Home Assistant. So I don't think I'm the best person to explain how it needs to be done. But what I can tell you is I followed a couple of uh, blog posts and then YouTube videos. So first of all, there is this one, which says installing Home Assistant supervised or a Raspberry Pi with Debian 10. I think I've made one mistake here because it says that you need to install Debian 10 on the Raspberry Pi before you start the installation and instead of Debian 10 I just go to the Raspberry Pi um, website and I've downloaded the latest Buster version I think uh, again it goes back a couple of weeks so I don't remember the exact details and as a result of that if I go to the configuration and um where is it i think it's uh, no no not integration maybe it's a supervised no it's developed oh no actually it's here um as i said i'm just getting used to it i'm getting this message that i'm running home assistant on an unsupported installation but i'm guessing if you follow this post even you know at first step then you wouldn't get this message i don't think it creates any issues i mean everything seems to be running fine at the moment so yeah i'm not sure uh, once I finished with this blog post, I had a Home Assistant running on my Raspberry Pi and I could access the Home Assistant uh, page using the touch screen which is connected to the Raspberry Pi. So that was the first step. And after that, I've basically gone through two videos. The first one was uh, from the hookup. This is the Node-RED for Beginners 2021 edition. And it says Node-RED, but it actually also goes through the installation of Home Assistant. And um, well, that basically just takes you through the, you know, how you install Node-RED on top of Home Assistant. So that was one video. And once I had everything up and running, I followed this video which is about uh, getting started ESP Home in Home Assistant. So I have managed to install the ESP Home add-on and with this add-on you can create a firmware for an ESP based sensor. So I'm still figuring out the ESP Home part of it but as you can see I've already have a test sensor put together with an ESP VMOS D1 Mini. I have a BME 680 connected to it and the BH1750. So 680 is uh, an environment sensor, so temperature, humidity, air pressure and the air quality as well. This is a light sensor and this is a separate temperature and humidity sensor and this is a microwave or a radar motion sensor. And when the motion is detected, it's going to light up this LED. So this is all based on ESP Home. And I'm already loving ESP Home because you can do it without any programming. And it's, it's easy and it's quick as long as you have Home Assistant. And you don't even need MQTT. So, so this is where I'm at the moment. And by the way, if you look at my dashboard, you can see the readings as well. So um, yeah, I have pressure and 
oh, pressure is dropping. I think some storm is coming or something like that. And yeah, luminance and the other usual things. And I can also control the LED from here and I can change the color. But then this LED is also being controlled by the motion sensor. So it gets switched off and switched to red whenever motion is detected. So if you follow these videos, you would probably be able to get to this part. On the node red side, I haven't done too much. There is a system monitoring component that I use on my other node red instance as well. So that is monitoring, you know, uh, SD card usage and memory usage and the CPU temperature. So this is a Raspberry Pi 3 plus. It doesn't have any fans on it. So it just uh, basically a heat sink stuck on the CPU, but it's still running, you know, 45 degrees, which is, I think it's, you know, it's good enough for a Raspberry Pi. And if I look at the node red, I still have to remember how I can, you know, launch the Node Red, but I can. Oh, Node Red. Oh, there is an update available. Okay, but I can open the web UI, and that loads the Node Red editor for me. So as you can see, I haven't done anything. I just installed this system component, and uh, I think I made some minor modifications, uh, which is specific to the Home Assistant, just to get some data and. And what I'm doing at the moment is this flow, uh, you can download this flow from the uh, Contrib OS uh, page. So I'm using uh, one moment, Contrib OS, I think it's called, yeah, Node Red Contrib OS. So that's the example flow. And all I'm doing is I'm piping all these values into MQTT out nodes. So this is how I'm communicating with the Home Assistant at the moment. So the node red flow is sending the data into uh, MQTT and then our Home Assistant picks up the values from the MQTT. But I realized that, well, I don't really need to do that because I can use the Home Assistant um, uh, nodes as well to, to send updates to Home Assistant. And since ESP home devices are not going to use MQTT, I would probably end up changing this flow and then just uninstalling MQTT because most probably I won't be using it at all. And actually there is one last thing that I have done on the Raspberry Pi because I want, you know, once the Raspberry Pi starts, I wanted the Home Assistant dashboard to automatically start in a browser session on the screen itself. Uh, so for that, I had to do two things. So first of all, I had to create a shared script so I'm um, just pasted in my, you know, home slash, slash home slash pi, and I call it the kiosk.sh. And in here I have done this. Um, so I do a sleep for one minute because anyway, it takes a couple of minutes on this Raspberry Pi for the home assistant to start up. So, you know, a little bit of delay is not going to do any harm. But after that one minute, the system is going to launch the browser, which is going to launch the Home Assistant UI on the local IP. And I've also added all these parameters. So it should be in kiosk mode, no error dialogues. And um, to be honest, I just copied some examples. And um, I also added this, which is uh, start full screen. What it seems to be doing, it is definitely starting the Chrome session in full screen, but it's not the full full screen that you get if you press F11. And um, I'm not sure why it is doing that. It definitely should be doing in full screen, uh, but for some reason, this uh, start full screen doesn't apply. So I don't know how to make that, you know, truly full screen where you don't see the status bar of the Linux system and also the, you know, the header of the application itself. So I need to fiddle around that one. But once you create this, you also have to change it to, what is it? Um, you know, uh, have to change the rights so it is executable file. And once you have done that, you can also edit the auto start. So this is the slash etc xdg lx session lxde dash pi and auto start. And you just add at slash home slash pi slash kiosk dot sh. So that will auto start the share script that would launch the Chromium browser. And I haven't done any other configuration. I mean, obviously, when I've installed the Raspberry Pi image, I configured in the Pi config that it auto starts the uh, in the GUI. And, and that's it. And the good thing about this is that the, the basic screensaver feature means that the, you know, the screen comes on and if you are not touching it, then after five minutes, or I'm not really sure what the timer period is, but the screen automatically goes blank. And when you touch it, 
then it just wakes up. So uh, that's going to be ideal because, you know, the power saving feature is automatically built in. You don't have to do anything. If you follow some tutorials on the web, sometimes you see how you can disable the screen saver. But I think in this instance, you probably want to leave the screen saver as it is. And the last thing I want to mention is I was also talking about this ventilation unit. So this is the unit I have gone for. It looks like just a you know, simple Q ventilator, but this is a type which has a heat exchanger inside. So in the winter months, if you run this, it will preheat the outside air with the one that it blows out. So I will be losing less heat by running this pump. And it looks like that it also comes with, well, so you can also order this uh, uh, switch separately. And that basically switches the ventilator in three different speeds. But these speeds are just three simple outputs. So I would be able to drive this uh, with an ESP8266 and using four relays. So I think three relays for the different speeds and then one relay to actually turn it on and off. So that's how I'm planning to automate this. So I think that would be all about the holiday home automation for the time being. Um, I'm going to leave the links of all the different uh, blog posts and also the videos that I talked about in the video description. So if you want to replicate this uh, project, that's the best way to start. And um, I will be posting new videos on how I'm getting some of my ESP home sensors up and running. And then and hopefully once I go and, you know, do some renovations on the home, I will also take some, you know, pictures and videos so you can see how it, it progresses. But I'm probably going to, you know, mostly talk about the, the automation and the, the electrical stuff. But it's coming along nicely. So I'm, I'm quite excited to see this project through. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.